I know Kung Fu. Show me. You are the new student. Come closer. You're listening to the Kung Fu Podcast presented by James Still. I don't care if it's Muhammad, Imad, Bruce Lee. And Steve Newby. This is the original five fingers of death right here. But my hands are registered as lethal weapons. That means we get into a fight, I accidentally kill you. I go to jail. This is true. This is true. Hi, guys. Welcome to podcast 18 of the Kung Fu podcast. My name is James Still. I'm joined by, uh, by you know, the, the, the teacher in, in Mountie country, you know, uh, across those uh, British Columbian skies. Mr. Steve Newby, how are you doing? Hi. <laughs> still locked down. Still on lockdown. Uh, not <laughs> as bad as you. I no. can still go out. <laughs> Oh, I can go out. I can just walk around my garden, and I've got to have an excuse <laughs> to have a picnic and all the rest of it. So, yeah, no, um, guys, we've 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 had some news this week. Yeah, we have. We've been um, we've been caught out. <laughs> we've we've been well and truly exposed for for the frauds we are. We, yeah. It turns out that we made a massive mistake last last time on the podcast on podcast seventeen when we had the audacity. To, to suggest that basically the pagoda Mr. Newby was talking about seven minutes into podcast 17 was the wrong pagoda. Well, no, it was it was a pagoda with a with a current abbot, abbot in 2001. Um, now, I don't know whether it was full, <laughs> whether there was an abbot in it or whether it was built for the new abbot. I assumed it was being built for the abbot listen, waiting to pop his socks. Right. And well, that's why I mentioned it. Listen, so I have I it from apologize. a very reliable troll. Sorry, listener. <laughs> a very reliable listener who has is, is kindly informed me with this message. Seven minutes in, you confused the pagoda with the former stand-in, abbot Z and the current abbot Shi Yong Zin. Okay, so we we obviously got our pagodas mixed up. Yeah, so, but can I sorry, mm, yeah. can, can I just confirm though that there's the information about the fact there is got businesses in 40 countries and that is the current abbot. That's the current abbot. Yes. So what the bloody hell difference does it make what pagoda we're talking about? Listen, I listen. apologize intensely that I saw a pagoda and assumed it was the abbot in waiting. Perhaps it was the older abbot mm. and or, or maybe maybe it was full of abbot. <laughs> I haven't got a clue. There was a guy but called the, Russ. Did you see Russ? He was there as well. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, I'm sorry. I used to watch him. As no, a we kid. can't make we can't make light of, of when we're wrong. We That's have true. To, I do. I, I apologize listen. intensely that I may have led thousands of listeners both of them <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, into believing that the 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 you know the pagoda was built for a particular right. abbot um, okay. now 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 it's but, worth me saying that this 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 avid listener mm. has pointed out our, our mistake That's but fine. he posted on our Facebook and then immediately removed the comment well, so I don't know why he did that, but... Well, maybe he just wanted to send you a message, but maybe, I haven't got your email. Maybe, maybe, maybe. So I thought I'd put together a little little tune to express my, my deepest condolences for, for getting these facts right and, and being a party to you getting these facts right, because it wasn't my fault, but I feel I have to take yeah. responsibility because I am the presenter. So here's yeah. my present to you. It's your fault. Bud Light presents Real Men of Genius. Real man of genius. Today we salute you, Mr. Post a comment on Facebook, then deletes it. Mr. Post a comment on Facebook, then deletes it. Because of your tireless typing efforts, we now know the true pagoda of the abbot. We also know who you are. You can't hide from us now. 
Tirelessly you perfect your deadly keyboard artistry, waiting to pounce on us when we get it wrong. You need a hobby now! Because what you do when you have absolutely no talent whatsoever is troll someone who does. I'm a great big troll, yeah! So crack open an ice cold Bud Light on us, you old fearsome Facebook raider. Because when it comes to martial arts, you put the Kung Flu in Kung Fu. Bud Light Beer on Iser Bush in Louis, Missouri. <laughs> Listen. He's a real man of genius. Anyway. Listen. You are a troublemaker. That's I, what you are. You're a troublemaker. <laughs> I don't know where I get it from, old man. I don't know where I get it from. Anyway, we must press on with business. Business, business, business. Um, let's talk about something technical. What say you? Um, ha have you mm. any suggestions? Me and technical. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting on more questions for people to send, you mm. know. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I, we were going to talk about, you know, the poll and stuff like that. This is one of the biggest, uh, you know, things that I hate about um, when people are learning to poll. Yeah. And, and there have been some videos made, obviously, uh, regarding, you know, uh, instruction of, you know, the syllabus and so on. And um, obviously, when you look at them, you've got to decide for yourself whether you think that they're correct or yeah. not. And, and um, you know, there are many things that I disagree with when obviously when you see videos people make videos all the time and uh, I do understand that when you do a video you are judged by that specific video from then on from then on they don't believe that 10 years after the video was made you've actually progressed and so on and so forth mm. you know just that's 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 life um, but when you make the video you're gonna have some idea of what you're doing and um otherwise don't make a video yeah but of course when you when you do do things and you make the odd mistake as long as you can sort of say oh you know that was a mistake i can oh you can always update videos as well you can always take them off and do them again yeah so it's but um it's the same when people write books i remember i went to a tai chi course in scotland um in danoon and it was a it was a great course there's lots and lots of different Tai Chi people from all over Scotland um, and they all you know there's a couple of them have written books and one of them was doing a, a talk kind of at the end and he says you know I wrote this book and he says it's complete trash <laughs> you know and yeah. the reason being is he obviously knew that what he knew then when he wrote the book and he yeah. thought he knew everything was different to what he knew as he started to you know learn a little bit more digest yeah. it a bit yeah. a few years later yeah. and that's of course the same with everybody when they write books and when they I, you know perform I, uh, instructional videos here's, here's, well at least most yeah so i you know obviously i don't know where these things are going but now you've sort of mentioned that i want to bring up what i want to bring up is a big sort of bane in my um in in my thoughts and that is of bruce lee right mm -hmm. now obviously like most people getting into martial arts we 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 see bruce lee we get inspired and all the rest of it but you see for me when you when you talk about what i knew when i was younger as opposed to what i knew when i was older mm. i kind of think that bruce lee had he had he had good innings didn't he i mean you know but i say good innings he, he did a lot with the time he had that's what i mean but he did die relatively young didn't he so he never got to experience the martial arts as an older um person yeah. if you like yeah. and i kind of think all that all the books he wrote jeet kune do tao jeet kune do and all the rest of it and his kind of attitude towards martial art may have may have turned around in later life uh, I, I don't know but i'm left with a sort of sour taste in my mouth with bruce lee because simultaneously i think he is probably the the most important um thing to happen to 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 martial arts in the 20th century but also mm. the the biggest detriment uh, at the same time because he sort of contributed to uh the the the, the uh, uh what do they call Prolification it Prolification of cr yeah. stupidity yeah and the dissolved and the dissolve but that's of not martial you, arts. yeah that's not his fault you no, know you can't blame no, him for i'm that. not it's... blaming him i'm just saying he, yeah. he maybe had something to do with it well, obviously his influence had a lot to do with it, but you influence, you know, now if you're in a position of, you know, some, uh, 
whether it's notoriety or power or whatever you want to call it, mm. some uh, of responsibility, you're always going to influence people. But how those people respond to the influence is down to them. You know, you can yeah. have people who respond stupidly, and you can have people who respond with a great respect. And uh, you know, but that's not the person who you know is in that position. It's not their fault. It's I think it just simply means that uh, there are a lot of real weird and wonderful people in in the world. That's yeah. all. But I mean, you know, you know? But, but, I mean, like, correct me if I'm wrong, right? Bruce Lee started off with Kung Fu, you know, mm -hmm. and then he sort of went, he did a U-turn, a 180 and dived off a bloody, you know, mountain and ended up with Jeet Kune Do, you know, because... Is it because he didn't understand the principles of his Kung Fu? Which I find very hard to believe because he wrote no, such eloquent he's, books. Yeah, mm. yeah. He, he, I think his books are great and um, uh, I, I think he was just trying to put everything into a, a single category really to make it fightable. It's like saying, you know, do Kung Fu but I prefer kickboxing. Um, it, it's the same thing but kickboxing per se didn't exist when he was around. You know, it kind of developed yeah. around that time, yeah. and you know, full contact kickboxing and so on became yeah. a, obviously a popular thing. Semi contact. Yeah. I mean, you did you did you know points fighting karate and that sort of thing, but semi contact you know kickboxing or you know especially the way Lao does it, and yeah. uh, you know, and obviously all the other styles uh, followed suit. Now it's that didn't exist at that time, and I think it, you know to see those things. Uh, proliferate around the, the world yeah. you know he, he never got to see that kind of thing and maybe it's just he tried to, but but really I think his sort of concept was to try to put a fighting into a teacup you know make it all easy to learn um, just use the simplest things and use the, yeah. the things that work And but isn't that what most martial arts um, well call them enthusiasts but, but people who don't you know continue with a style or develop a style or, or are dedicated to a style they tend to do that i mean we're referring really to not just fighters of like mma and that but we're referring to really just general everybody who tends to cross train and you know my attitude mm -hmm. to cross training um yeah they, they oh yeah if i use that i can then use that to do this and that to do that and i can learn judo to throw people and learn jiu-jitsu to sit on their face and then i can you know learn taekwondo to kick people in the head and do karate to to power punch mm -hmm. you know and and yet if they stayed with a style that was genuine an authentic style that was that was true to itself and that was obviously workable mm -hmm. eventually they would learn all those things they wouldn't have to go off on a tangent anywhere because you can throw, you, you can use a technique for anything, as we've already explained. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of styles and teachers, because it's not just about the styles, the styles probably started out quite well. But, um, and probably in some areas, they probably, it's still probably very good. And even they sort of just turn, you know, slap themselves on the head when they look at other people, yeah. you know, doing their, their particular style. They just go, for God's sake, you know, what's he trying to tell people? Yeah. And, and of course, um, you know, all these people uh, just end up doing all sorts of different things that that really, you know, with with not just the as I say, not just the styles, but the teachers start to do go off on tangents in all kinds of different directions and, and end yeah. up with a style that doesn't even exist anymore because yeah. they've they choose one thing or another. But I'm sure that's probably happened in history as well. You know, where you've got lots of different. Um, proliferations of, of Shaolin mm. styles anyway I mean five yeah, straight yeah. away to our knowledge yeah yeah uh, and then that turned into so many it's like you know branching yeah. off and everything and yeah, yeah because of people what is a style let's explain what a style is it's a preference of a person's preference whoever learns enough to be able to uh, control or dominate the the arena or uh, you know the learning arena or the fighting arena whatever it becomes his way of doing things right everyone accepts him as or her mm. as that's the way you do things yeah. so that's what a style is so when you look at uh, karate is a great example originally karate was just called guess what karate <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah 
and then it became oh wait a minute let's do waduru karate oh uh, uh, we do shotokan karate we do gojoryo karate mm. we do you know all, all these different bloody things and and all they are is different people's opinions so there is in the end only one style it's just the way people teach it teach it in with different preferences and of course depending on their size their preference is, is of there is there a preference for for the build of a person in chinese martial arts what i mean is like if you if you're talking about martial science and generally we'll always go we'll always talk about speed right because that mm -hmm. you know uh power is relative speed is absolute it, it makes no sense for for you to try and compare your power with another person because it's never going to be the mm -hmm. same but yeah. speed as a concept not just speed and technique but speed and thought process planning whatever you want to call it that is 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 a uh, definitive sort of basis for a science we've got now yeah when we look at different sized people is it fair to say that if you've got a big person say i mean let's just you know look at the history of lao right let's assume that the 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 the, the monk the uh, lao some now the, the tiger hunter was taught lao was of small stature Let's just assume it. We don't know it, but let's just assume it. Now, because he's of small stature, he has to emphasize a lot more uh, of a speed-based system. Whereas, what if he was a huge lump of a bloke? How different do you think Lao would be in terms of the, uh, you know, the scientific principles we operate under? Yeah, well, on that basis, perhaps we can look at the, the founder of Hongar, Hong, Gar, Hong mm. the tea merchant, was a strong person and because it seems to me that his style is based a lot more on strength and power than say the guy who did laugar you know yeah uh, devised laugar so it's it's it is it is interesting to sort of uh, contemplate that and as you say we will never know mm. but in most history except in the case of abbots we uh don't mention <laughs> we, <don't, Abbott's. laughs> we don't know okay yeah. we do not know um so it, it is but, just a matter it's yeah. a matter of conjecture is, isn't it so and it's an interesting yeah. factor so but it, it, being it, that it is a matter of conjecture would you would you then you know suggest that there is a an ideal sort of body size or type to to, to be studying martial arts no uh, I, I, you, I do you know what i mean I, in terms of yeah. the original the original yeah. uh you know yes, um, uh, it, but that's that's exactly what we're talking about styles. When you talk mm. about styles, people will have different preferences. You know, a heavier guy will do you know far more yeah. you know punching kind of techniques and s strong you know stances and so on. Uh, a, a smaller person is going to do as much as he can within the, mm. the range he's got. Um, kind of a lot more technique to be faster because he's got to be faster he's got to close the gap yeah. that's left between his arm and the longer guy's arm you know he's, he's got the shorter sword hasn't he he's got mm -hmm. the shorter stick so he's not going to be able to um you know take the fight so easily unless he can get inside so he's all his strategy and technique has got to be what's he going to do once he gets inside you know yeah. so it's it, it kind of it's a difficult uh, scenario it's the same with battles you know what do you do when you, you're confronted by a huge army mm. uh, an amazing you know you know massive army in comparison to your own you have to use strategies that are going to be compliant with mm. success uh, so we've already talked about the battle of Agincourt haven't we <laughs> no. the one with the hill yeah um, no the one with the, the triangular don't, field don't, don't, don't go into that again yeah no it's uh, it's just yeah no I, I thought it was a, an interesting premise as to you know does i think i think you yeah you know. I, I think you find i mean it's certainly in modern times and and of course this is going to bring argument which is what we're all about really um when you look at the a general makeup of a, of a karate guy over the years uh, the successful karate guy would be a kind of a stocky short stocky powerful man uh, right and then when you have like taekwondo you would imagine him to be a, a kind of a lanky thin mm. um not you know um no, no, kind no, of no. really thin but just no. simply a, a tall guy yeah. who can you know a great stretcher yeah. and and obviously his genes his gene pool is full of you know lap dancers or do you know what i mean yeah. rather than <laughs> rather than office workers yeah, yeah. so they he's got a great deal of you know stretchability in him a lot of flexibility yeah. 
and and then you talk about jujitsu people and this is you know my opinion and and i've seen this um certainly over a period of time and this this may change in different periods of time mm. but but certainly over you know that i experienced over a certain time during the 80s and 90s and that was jujitsu people would be bloody big guys because you know the bigger you are the more likely you're going to be able to stop someone pulling you down or throwing you down and holding you down yeah. um now i'm not suggesting that everyone that does these styles is of that stature what i'm saying is on a on a on the whole the majority of people who are successful will be that kind of stature unless they change the rules yeah i was going to say and, it's rule dependent yeah. though isn't it yeah but when you talk about kung fu because you can use and you're taught to use the techniques in lots of different ways you there's no and the, because the techniques are so prolific you there's no real status you know size body status that you can um, that you can pin down you can have you know i mean look at wing chun wing chun is a woman mm. and so she was able to you know combat a much bigger person in uh, as the legend goes mm. and uh, and then i say we don't know what who lao looked like we don't know what hong looked like but we know from the the type of styles that, that they've turned out to be that they tend to be certainly different sized people that's yeah. for sure yeah. and um, and you know you just don't know but but from experience i can see that uh, you know it doesn't tend to matter um in terms of success what size a person is or what gender for that matter look mm -hmm. at sharon gill how successful she was yeah and and in and it is and in terms of um when she participated in that um thing on bbc2 what was it called that uh, thing we talked masters about masters of combat you know? masters of combat she was the only girl in that you know in all the different teams that participated yeah. to actually beat the boys yeah, yeah she was beating the boys because she had a great style and a great you know what strategy to coming from that style yeah. so uh you know it's a, she's a very good uh, ambassador for lao she's a very humble person isn't she she's yeah. like i had uh, to sleep with her dad oh lucky you <laughs> no when we went to <laughs> we went to berlin <laughs> we, went, we went to the world championships in 1991 yeah. and we all had to share rooms yeah. and, and I, I shared my room with her dad <laughs> There's a pic we've got a picture on our facebook of very young sharon gill haven't we along with uh sort probably of some of your uh i think with rebecca mm. drawery in that in on a in a room. oh yeah yeah back in yeah yeah then, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, but, but uh, no, it's uh, but but I mean, you know, like all this cross training thing that Bruce Lee was on about, you know, eradicating style. He's saying that styles are bad because you shouldn't have a style. Mm. You should just have, you know, it should just be your sort of, uh, you know, uh, you know, you know, yeah, your ideal, if you like, of but, fighting but, or whatever. But, but don't you think the reason for that is because a lot of people never got to finish the style because obviously it was yeah. brand new in those days martial arts kung fu generally yeah. was brand new so quite frankly anybody who started to train kung fu for that you know you know when they saw bruce lee come out on the, in the movies and stuff they all started training in kung fu wherever they could get it the guy that was probably teaching had never never if he had at all learned any kung fu um and, and a lot of them didn't they just come out with a load of crap yeah they then learned that and of course none of them would have been able to complete a style none of them would have been able to understand a, a complete style and and fulfill that yeah. ambition if you want so so what you're saying now if you look at it today of course you can sustain a style because you can complete the whole syllabus if you want and go through it and then you can discover what the style has to offer in terms of yeah, the fact that it isn't that it is so diverse yeah. and and it isn't limited because of its being one style whereas in those days they were limited in yeah. what they chose to do and then they had arguments with people who chose and then we're going back to the same situation where they uh, you know you got a big guy talking to a little guy going well my style's better than your style and then they got to prove it and then they kind of deviate and everybody changes and that's basically what a lot of martial arts have done and then they've come out with a name for it yeah. and they've called it a style so even though they don't believe in styles 
they call it a style yeah, Jeez, yeah. so it's so ironic yeah yeah but, but it's a style that but, has no style yeah but i mean bruce lee didn't finish his martial art training you know what I mean? no that's true it was so, no one none of them did yeah uh, no <laughs> that's my point like you know but i mean when you look at when you when you say oh what is a style or whatever can we can we sort of say maybe that kung fu in general very similar techniques across the board if not identical right but mm -hmm. you know well they would be if they were taught properly yeah, yes yeah there you go there you go right so sort of different styles sort of kung fu can emphasize different things but mm. if we're looking at a complete style like so for example you might turn around and say oh wing chun right oh it's not mm. a complete style because you know and and what people might say is oh they just do low kicks they just emphasis on sticking mm. hands this that and the other right and then you look at sort of laogar and you go yeah well we do this we do that da, 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 da. Yeah. now isn't it dependent on the knowledge and the scientific principles by which the arts are taught i mean christ say you, yes you could take wing chun and you could take it in a totally different direction with your knowledge of 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 anatomy of logic of yeah. science of strategy tactics hey, be careful that. when you say my knowledge of anatomy because i don't even know where a car <laughs> <it> is <laughs> you know what i but, mean but i i just want to i just want to add a point there when you said about styles is really what we should be saying about styles is when you take a stylist you should you should really be thinking you should take a person because the person who teaches it is the one that decides on where that style goes right. it seems yeah and um unfortunately the problem there is not every individual who does it has the knowledge to do it they just simply do it because a it's either beneficial uh in terms of their uh power or their um reputation mm. or and obviously financially viable yeah. so so they that's where styles have gone in today's world is that they've gone all over the place i think yeah. the one I, th I think there's just one thing that lao has right. that no other style had right? right and that is simply mastia it's just about talking about one individual person right. who was able to teach specific technology if you like or, or technical uh, data yeah. that everybody took on board could see the success in what he did could see the success and stuck with him for mm. many of them anyway even to this day mm. over you know 50 years have stuck with him and uh, and so the style has been prolific of course you've got deviations of that style which everybody calls you know Lao or they want to call it Lao because of its reputation mm. and um, but of, of course it will look totally different and this is where we're going you know sometimes when you talk about people who have left yeah. the association they just go off on a tangent i've got a clue but, but, but forget the association now if we're just talking about lao gar as a, as a style as a, as a concept as a science or whatever do you feel and it's putting you on the spot do you feel that being in canada you have got the tools and the knowledge to proliferate the style uh well of course i do yeah, right. <laughs> but there's a thousand that don't yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, but right, the thing exactly. is it's all about the questions you know i i once um I, I went to scotland to build up the scottish area and uh, i had no money yeah. uh, but i just went up to scotland because i was determined to see lao build and i'd seen what it was like up there they asked me to go up there for a couple of weeks holiday as i said before i ended yeah, yeah. up there for eight, eight years yeah. when i went up there you know we were looking under the carpet for coins because we had absolutely no money right yeah and we just we paid for a house that we, we sold our house in, in England and uh, in Birmingham and we uh, we bought a house there that was a wreck and we had to do it up but but as we build up the students some of those students were carpenters and uh, roof roof fixers and mm. whatever yeah. tilers and and so the house got done because everybody sort of you know helped me yeah. but the, the, the point I'm saying is that during that time because I had no money I drove up to Edinburgh to look for an agency to drive trucks because that's what i've done before yeah and i went in and i said uh you know i need to uh, you know would you take me on as an agency you know mm. to drive any any yeah. trucks basically they phone you up and give you a job and i says uh, you know and they said have you got any references and i went ask me a question 
right. that's all I did. I said, ask me a question. And then they, they asked me various questions about trucking and so on. And then they gave me a tachograph test and whatever, you know, how to fill out the, all the books and whatever. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, uh, I got the job. And then they gave me a brilliant reference when I eventually started to make enough to live mm. with the Kung Fu. Now, the, the point I'm making is I've come over to Canada with absolutely nothing. And I've come and I've watched and studied, I've, you know, scrutinized the martial arts around here as well as before I came over here. Mm. I looked at the, the martial arts and I couldn't see anything that that had any anything near what the information that I have. So for me, that's how I judge my ability to buy others. Mm. I don't judge it by myself. I don't say yeah. I'm the greatest. What I do is I look at other people and ask me a question. Yeah. That's all I have to say. Yeah. Ask me a question and I'll give you an answer. And if I can give you a logical answer and it's a usable technique or uh, a good reason, then that's fine. Whatever you do, don't ask me any bullshit about Chinese terminology <laughs> and Chinese because I'm not interested. Yeah. All I'm interested in is whether the technique works and whether it doesn't, how it's done, how you practice it, and how you apply it yeah. and that's it i don't care what it's called mm. i don't care whether it's you know twin dragons climb up the mountain and pull the ass off a donkey <laughs> i don't care what it's called don't don't yeah. bother me with those questions and um you know so yeah and you know without any reference to that i'm no. i'm happy that i do understand the, the, the science of the kung fu yeah and 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 i've proven it already anyway because i've been to different styles and looked at them and i've ended up telling them what to do <laughs> Did, didn't, didn't you once tell her didn't you were you once teaching a jujitsu class or something uh, or had a group of jujitsu guys and you were showing them the first set and they were all like, yeah and they were just mesmerized yeah. they just hadn't got a clue Mind yeah, you, but that was yeah. that was years ago. That was in the eighties. Well, that that's, was they that's just what... they didn't have a clue then. Mm -hmm. They probably haven't got a clue now. Well, I remember the first time I walked in, into your uh, into your club in Hereford, and I sat down with you, and you said, uh, uh, you, uh, "You said you said what's this?" And you, you gestured the first move of the first set, and I and I went, "Oh," you said, "Is it a block?" I said, "Yeah, it's a block." Is it a strike? I said, "No." Is it this? Is it that? I said, "No," and you said, "It's all of those." And I went, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> you had me hooked then but it's like yeah. i did you know that was a totally alien concept to me because i i was still in sort of uh you know uh mono you know i was yeah when, mono when, yeah when I, that's good do you know what yeah. i mean and, and, and i taught you in stereo yeah there you go <laughs> and i was like holy shit this is this is going to be interesting and uh yeah so mm. it was yeah but amazing isn't it about time james you took a grade i think so <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? What are you saying? We're well, I know that it didn't appeal to you and you wasn't that interested no. at the no. time. And it's been 16 years it since you <laughs> got talked a brown sash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, I'm still you know, a brown sash. But, you just never... Yeah. But, but it you, never sort of... Yeah, you've I just did. come out, James. Yeah, I know. <laughs> 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 oh, my goodness, mate. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. No, but when when you when i when i was a brown and i was yeah. getting ready to do my black i think yeah. i think i said to you are you going to be on the panel and you said oh no i'm not going on the panel again and i went <laughs> <laughs> i went why <laughs> you gave i can't remember what you said now but you just you weren't going on the panel and then i kind no. of lost a bit of uh, a little bit of oomph for it you know mm. because i thought listen i i, I really apologize. no 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 i don't i'm not blaming you but the thing with me is i have such like a, a deep-seated respect for the technicians of Lao, Master Yao, jo John Russell, and and you know the, the senior, you know technicians of the style, you included, and oh, I wanted that's nice. well you know and what I wanted was I wanted to to, to to do my black sash with with you there, not because I thought I'd be getting a free pass, but because I wanted to share that experience with you, and I wanted them. To, to 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 maybe remark oh he's he's all right or whatever not that i would have been do you know what i mean yeah, but it yeah, would have been yeah. nice but yeah. if you weren't there then that didn't spur me on because i thought listen the only person on that panel who knows me and knows my ability other than watching the physicality 
you know, would would have been you. Now I'm not saying that Bastia, mm. John Russell, would never have like taken in my uh, my aesthetic uh, ability and, and, and drawn <laughs> conclusions from it. But but what I'm saying is, you know me, uh, and that's mm. a very sort of personal relationship. And that to me is what martial arts is about because, you know. I uh, I mm. did watch Kung Fu and I appreciate the the, the, the master <laughs> student thing, but you know, do you know what I mean? I have the respect for you like that, and I didn't want. Yeah, to be I, I did. I, I saw things I didn't I didn't really want to be part of in terms yeah. of of judging people, and and I did know people that went for gradings and yeah. didn't get judged fairly, yeah. uh, and and I'm not saying that because they're my student or anything. It's just you, you have to take into consideration their age. You have to take take into consideration their yeah. their uh, limitations I, I know as well. Exactly who you're talking about? A lovely yeah. lady in Scotland. Yeah. Yeah. And she, she very yeah she had arthritis yeah. and she she I, I tell you what she looked great when she did it she she did her best she did everything yeah. she could and uh, she didn't flaunt anything she did everything that she was expected to do but yeah. you know some of the wrist movements were difficult for her to do um, but no she did fine and uh, yeah. no she didn't get treated uh, yeah. uh, the way that she should have been so. Uh, I just felt it. Yeah. It's not for yeah. me to, yeah. you know, not for me to comment about how the grading should be done. Of course, that's not my, yeah. that's not my thing. It's just I think uh, a couple of people agreed with me as well. But I'm not, you know, it doesn't mean a thing. You know, I, I I'm I'm not that important to uh, to change anything like that. That's that's mm. just the way gradings are expected to be, I guess. Yeah. And um, oh, yeah. but I think if 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 you watch a young guy who's you know young and strong and you know capable of teaching or capable of um you know going on to do all sorts of wonderful things then you should judge him a lot more uh yeah. stringently i should say yeah. but when someone is doing it you know for the just for the prestige of of getting that belt after so many years effort and and you know that they've got certain limitations you have to take those limitations into account yeah yeah, and, uh, and and such is life and you know I have seen I've seen people young guys that have got nowhere near as much quality as uh, as uh, Ada had and yeah. I don't mind mentioning her name she's uh, a wonderful she's wonderful student yeah yeah and yeah, she yeah. she did the Tai Chi and that and then she ended up doing the Kung Fu yeah you know, follow, following the flock <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah. Me, yeah, no, you, you know, you do have the odd disagreement with your peers, don't you? Or your oh, yeah, there's, the, yeah. I, I, I mean, the thing is, you've, if, if you have an organisation where they cannot, and I'm not just talking, I'm not talking about Lao particularly. Um, you can make your own mind up. How you know when I talk about associations, um, but when you, you know, are in an association that they cannot be. Um, questioned um, if you have you know reservations and you need to talk about it and you need to change things you need to see things are you know and I'm not talking about the style I'm not talking about changing the style I'm not talking about anything technical I'm just talking about you know policies of, of organization you see you got you got students um, who are who have been there many 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 years as, as me as well and they they leave their jobs eventually and they start running business they run martial arts as a business and it's those people that actually proliferate a, an association they develop yeah. the association they're, they're not asking to be the head of the association they're not asking to be you know made to look important they are important because they're the ones that have bought up the majority of the members yeah. between them oh, right. and of course when they bring up the majority of the members they have businesses and they have families to look after and then when you have an association that will turn around and say wait a minute you know uh, we'll tell you uh, whether you're the, your subordinate student the, the student who is you know kind of uh, is stealing from you mm -hmm. he's back mouthing you he's talking badly behind your back uh, to to other students he's trying to win over the students so he can take the club away mm. and then and then these the 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 organization goes oh no you don't have a say in in your business how to run your business or how to sustain or protect your business from people like that yeah. when that happens 
you quickly lose respect, you quickly lose loyalty, you quickly lose belief. And the loyalty might stay actually because loyalty is left when belief is gone. Yeah. And when you, if you have all that belief in something and then suddenly some kind of methodical, you know, um, decision making is set up and uh, it completely destroys your business mm. because obviously what you've got to take into consideration if you're in a situation like that is when a student and we are talking about students who who may be you know uh deflammatory they make they you know do all sorts of stuff against you mm. and and you know then they try taking clubs and then when uh, you know you are can't do anything with them remember they can then go back to your other students and say look you know, I was right all the time. I'm innocent. I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. Look, they I'm still, still part of the association. Like. Yeah. Exactly. They, I'm still part of the association. Mm. So what do you think those students are going to do who have had them as their instructor? They're going because to follow you, them. Got, you put, yeah. yeah, you put them in their, you put them in that position. Yeah. You trusted them to do it. And then they became, you know, very uh, friendly with obviously the students that you'd given them because you'd given them the club. What happens? Of course, the people are going to follow them, and a, and and they wouldn't follow them if you turn around. Wait a minute, you know, uh, he's just been kicked out of an association. They wouldn't. They wouldn't follow him then. They just go. Oh, right. You know, maybe some of them would. Maybe mm -hmm. his closest, you know, associates would, but not all the students. Yeah. But but when you have the guy, the opportunity to, he goes off and he runs a club. Not only does he run the club, but the the, the an organisation might say, oh well, if if you just let him run uh his club anyway and then you you potentially end up having to teach him at a course or you potentially having to uh meet him at a competition and whatever you know how how can you possibly show respect for for a, yeah. your you know senior people if if those senior people can't control their own business yeah. that is that is just you know completely and utterly against the principle that you know any value that you might have and, and obviously very quickly yeah. this the association will fall apart it, it, and it and it yeah. does yeah. they do and they will fall apart because no one can say to someone look you can't run the business like this or you yeah. can't run your business like this now if you're doing it you know all legitimately and all above board and you're all loyal and everything and i'm sorry uh you're gonna have to decide on whether you can have a someone working for you irrespective and if that if that organization doesn't support you in that then why, why should you be part of that association why should you be part of that organization so you know that's that's the way associations make it's, big mistakes it's, it's, it's funny right because you look at traditional martial arts and you look at the hierarchy within the say traditional martial art yeah right you've always got you've got the the, the, the head haven't you the head of the style you know, yeah. the, 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 the father the master if you like yeah. everyone else is masters in weightlifting, but he has yeah. he has the say it's not a, a, it's not a council it's mm -hmm. it's a direct uh you know sort of like a paramilitary structure isn't it it's an autonomy yeah. it's a it's a, a yeah. totalitarianism okay. but so's a family yeah, a yeah, family yeah. So, is a family um, yeah is like exactly that. so it's just it's just like a family so you know you yeah. you know but when you when you add sort of when you have an organization uh involved in that and you've got sort of you know council members etc whereby you know n now you introduce the element of of democratic everything is you know i'd say i say democratic but you know everyone's going to debate and no but you mm. know is that a detriment to 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 the proliferation of of a martial no. art uh, no, I, I, I wouldn't suggest that it is uh, detrimental uh, having an organization that can take decisions. Right. Absolutely not. But they need to take decisions based on the evidence given to them by a number of members of the council or a number of members of the hierarchy. Yeah. And if they ignore obvious warnings and obvious information that needs to be addressed yeah and just rather just continue on a, on a blind path then pretty obviously and very quickly not only are you going to lose the belief 
of those members but you're going to lose the half of the organization through the fact that those people remember you know people do get friendly with their own students and their students will follow them mm. okay blindly or what and of course and if they've got a good if they've got a genuine say right then such is life you know that an organization means nothing without its members an organization isn't an organization an association is an associate is not an association without its members and with without senior members it has no direction either so you can blame senior there's a lot yeah. of you know senior members that go awry and go off on a tangent and yeah, sure. you know but half the time you they're already warned about it and they don't even heed the warnings yeah. other other seniors see the warnings they tell them and then they don't even bother to respond to them and and consequently big things happen and mm. and then they, they end up trying to pick up the pieces afterwards yeah. i mean i was with an association um i was asked to be part of a professional uh, association of kickboxing yeah uh, for many many years it was years so ago it was a professional kickboxing association yeah it was and it was uh, and basically i was i was kind of what do they call it when when someone watches you comes to watch you play football or watch you play you a tune were, or something uh, like that. head hunted i was head hunted that's there it you go. <laughs> and the reason i was head hunted is because i was teaching in scotland uh, lao in scotland and um this organization had no clubs in scotland so i was head hunted and and oh, would you be prepared to learn what we do and this is an organization that really it wasn't fighting per se it was just it's more based on fitness and and it had a syllabus pertaining to kickboxing but really was there was barely any fighters in it there were fighters yeah. and there were some good fighters but there was no real um interest or, or stamina for for every organizer every club to fight it was based on the principle that you know it was you, you it make was, a lot more money from fitness yeah. basically you had a lot more money from health and fitness and yeah. you know that kind of activity yeah, and punching pads yeah and all that. mcdojo is a is a, is a derogatory <laughs> term these days yeah. but it genuinely was like the mcdonald's of kickboxing i guess you can yeah you you, you may want to you know target it that way but 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 frankly I was quite happy to do it. I, I knew the guy and I was very happy to um, help him develop. Um, and I was the only person, because of the fact I was in Scotland and there's no way they would have gone up to Scotland to do any gradings, mm. I became the only person in that association next to the principal to actually grade yeah. in students. So I graded everybody but the black belts he still controlled the black belts mm -hmm. and and so you know no one else knew it it was a it was kind of a a, a well-kept uh, undocumented secret that i would only be the only person grading and uh, anyway cut a long story short i did grade quite a few people but in the end it never worked out in scotland so well because they were very pro lao they were very passionate about lao because i was yeah because all i ever did was just pump 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 the big cafe and and so they decided oh well um we'd rather do lao and and the kickboxing we're already doing and that sort of thing because they were into fighting yeah and and so i started doing it down south when i came i was already living down south yeah. after coming back from scotland and so I built quite a lot of areas up in in around the area of uh, you know Hereford and Worcester and those sort of areas mm -hmm. and um, yeah I got some good students got some got people to black belt and that and I even black obviously belt. had to learn this What's yeah black belt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. I had to get I had to go to the I had to go and learn the syllabus and yeah. pay a guy to teach me their syllabus well, yeah because when i could see it and, and you can imagine what i'm like yeah. <laughs> judging it and going yeah. oh for god's sake and, but the syllabus there was no master of the style or anything like that it was a kickboxing style there was no master the, the guy who actually ran it never even did the style and and basically it was like taught some so, by someone else from another so organization just so everyone's following you've got approached by you got headhunted by another organization uh -huh. not to do with laogar but at That's the right. same time there was ties to laogar 
Well, yeah, a lot of people have ties to Labour. Yeah. And yeah, you but... were put in a position whereby go and teach clubs in Scotland, but mm -hmm. I will allow you to take the gradings of all the students yeah. up in Scotland and nobody uh -huh. else in my organization can do this only you uh -huh. Steve yeah and so you agreed yeah yeah because he had to he had to give he had to give me a financial deal that yeah. would uh, be the same as what I would have with my own association yeah. so yeah so anyway consequently I uh, I d did build up clubs down south instead of Scotland um, and had a lot of black belts and then without me knowing <laughs> this is what I'm talking about mm. organizations yeah. without me knowing he started talking to all those black belts and yeah. telling them wait a minute you can come directly to me because his policy was I don't want any chief instructors yeah. because he'd already been stung a few times by chief instructors leaving him yeah. and so he decided in his new organization he would have no chief instructor so he, he wants would be to the retain only man. the power he yeah. retained the power direct to the students so yeah. anyone who wanted to be an instructor was directly actually under him yeah. so of course because all these students were down south he was able to control them he was able to coerce them and talk to them in the same way he did with me mm. next thing you know i didn't even get a phone call yeah. you know the next thing i know these these black belts were all going oh you've done this you've done that yeah. and uh, and the next thing i know they were all gone yeah and i'm going wait a minute <laughs> something's something's not right here right. so i i did call him uh, i found him several times i found his wife i found his his son answered his one son uh, was great and he answered and says oh i don't know what's going on steve I'll, I'll find out for you but i never from to this day and we're talking like i don't know 2010 or something like that mm. in i never saw or heard from him again and nothing and just all the students went you know those few students uh thought oh we can get a better deal we you yeah. know steve must have done this must have done that and of course everybody was like and of course all their students went with them as well the, yeah. in the same way which i've described earlier yeah. but the, the weird thing is i mean you know like i say his one son who's run the business of it he was he was a nice guy and he didn't know what was going on but i, I guess he was just told you know this is what we're doing and that's yeah, it blacklist and then steve yeah, yeah. but yeah but I, I mean it's like the one guy one of his sons jesus christ he did a course with guns i told you about that didn't i oh shit yeah, yeah. <laughs> did a course with guns and said you know you what you gotta do is grab the gun you know yeah. grab the slide and it stops the gun from working uh, i had to go to him at the end and says piss off <laughs> <laughs> don't be so bloody stupid oh, the, the, the stopping a slide doesn't stop a bullet coming out it fires anyway yeah. the only thing a slide stops is it re reloading <laughs> and that and oh. by then you've let go yeah. so it doesn't matter oh jesus christ oh, so god. yeah it, it, some some of the things he taught was totally embarrassing yeah. but you know i'm not mentioning any names or anything. you know people can work it out for themselves if they mm. want if they know me but, but other the, people will never know yeah well the point is that you weren't never given an opportunity to uh present your case to, to these yeah. students oh, no. because they'd no. fallen in love with the glitz and the glamour of this other guy who would yeah. effectively poach them you know yeah. Um, that's that's exactly what they did they were yeah. poached and yeah. uh, and yeah and and you would have thought the people who you teach would actually have more respect and more uh, on them, more in them, to actually say, you know, what's what's going on exactly? Such and such has told me this about you. Mm, yeah. So answer, you know, answer the yeah. accusations. I couldn't answer the accusations because I didn't know what the accusations <laughs> were. And that goes with you know some of the clubs that have left me in the past. You know, because they were obviously integrated in the kung fu as well. Yeah. Um, they were kung fu students originally, so that of course they then they then took took those as well and mm. um and completely uh, kind of annihilated certain parts of the areas that i was developing and eventually of course uh one of them was friendly with the guy in scotland and they were like chalk and cheese <laughs> well no they were they were like uh, together so oh, yeah so um so of course he went with them and i said so you know what happened exactly what exactly oh you know steve you know yeah. that's all they said you know and i'm going well tell me because i don't know i don't know exactly what uh, i've done to uh, to deserve what you have done to me and i'd love to know mm. and uh, anyway consequently of course uh, i lost my house 
Mm. And uh, and I end up in Scotland. In, in, where am I now? Canada. <laughs> so up yours. Yes. <laughs> well, there because, you yes, because I, rather than lie down and take it, I just got up and said, right, you know, yeah. I'm just going to have to do something about it. It's, and, it's, uh, but, I mean... I mean, from my point of view, if we if we just look at the, the, your role in proliferating Laogar, I mean, mm. with all due respect to a lot of other people, but you really have, you've really paid your dues in terms of doing that. I mean, when you went to Scotland, you you effectively, you know, let's let's say double the size of the organisation. But you know, do you know what I mean? That's, yeah, uh, we but, we had an awful lot of people. Let's put it that way. On, it may not have doubled the organisation, but it did. It certainly, you, you, you know, there's an awful lot. Yeah. Oh Christ. Yeah. But you know, well, why do you think I got the Guardian of the Year in two thousand and three? No one's ever had one. I, well, <laughs> because I did more gradings. Yeah. <laughs> I did more gradings than anyone else in the association put yeah. together. I sold more licenses than anyone else in the association put yeah. together. And I, and and I basically got um, the Guardian of the Year for that and uh but but there not that many um there's not that many professional um instructors that would mm. you know give everything up move their family and everything to yeah try to i mean that's the one thing about you steve no matter what you've you i mean most people put their, their family and their kids first but you've kind of <laughs> put no. the kung fu first <laughs> You, yeah. you come in with me and that's it yeah <laughs> you know? yeah yeah we're doing and, this we're doing you know that. i i you know yeah amazing you know and we're still together yeah yeah absolutely yeah. 28 years you don't get murder for that you don't get uh, bloody, <laughs> you, that that for murder i should say no. <laughs> you don't get 28 years for murder do you that's <laughs> that's not fair <laughs> no bless her yeah. love her yeah yeah no incredible yeah, yeah. We're real patience yeah it's been More incredible yeah. the Dalai Lama that woman <laughs> absolutely yeah and uh, you know but the thing is when all that kind of thing was happening you know she was really supportive by saying told you so <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> that's yeah. how she was told you so why do are you, you doing this do you ever yeah. feel you know in terms of the way things like turned out obviously you're in Canada and everything's fine now but do you ever feel sad for what might have been? And do you ever think there's I, something I, I, you no. could have done, like you would have restructured your way of thinking or, you know, real business? Oh, well, no, I structured it badly in the first place because I never had money on my mind. Mm. And that's why I shared it. Oh. And that's the problem. Yeah. I shared everything. Well, this is true. Um, I and mean, if you were the baddie, you'd have gone away with all the money, right? Well, if I was a baddie, they'd have seen me <laughs> driving a Porsche, wouldn't they? No, that's true. If I was, you know, did you ever see me driving a posh car? My car was always at least 10 years old yeah. and still is. I still have got a 10 year old car, you know, yeah. and, and so it's like I've never had. I bought two new cars in my life. One was a Metro and one, one was a, like a Renault 5 with both of them little tiny cars. Yeah. And by the time I sold the, Metro, the uh, Renault in Scotland, I bought that in Scotland after a year, it had done 50,000 miles. Yeah. and uh, I couldn't get anything for it <laughs> so yeah. and we had like four kids what we're going to do in a metro you yeah. know they were stuck in the boot two of them oh, so geez. but no I never had a I never had a new car um, yeah. so if if I was into the money if I was making you know mint, a mint off it for myself uh, a I wouldn't I would have paid my mortgage off and B I would have had a, a very nice car so <laughs> and I would have had nice holidays and all the rest of it yeah so yeah. So that was basically, yeah. That's that's kind of a a kind of a. That was quite a, personal, wasn't like it? A, yeah, yeah. We've been a bit personal today. It's quite a. Yeah. Oh, maybe we should entitle this about me. It's yeah. all about me. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, no. It's uh, what would I have done previously? Uh, what, I don't know what I would have done. I would. I've obviously would have considered the finance and and the business organisation of it better. Yeah. Um, but. I feel sadly, I, I always look back and think so, I'm saddened by the, the way the students um, would have had to, you know, change everything and yeah. start learning different things. And how would they have been coerced to do that? It's, it's easy, like I say, it's easy to coerce students into believing, you know, something's, you know, grass is always greener kind of thing. Yeah. And um, obviously there's, I, I must have made mistakes and obviously I must have, you know, knock someone's nose out of joint uh, i understand that that happens all the time people knock my joint nose out all the joint look at the size of it mm -hmm. so it's it's kind of um but yeah i feel sad for students and particularly when the instructors that sort of followed suit or the avid instructors that followed mm -hmm. suit 
hadn't got a clue of what they were doing and then the, the students take follow them and um you know one of them went and and so i was told through the grapevine uh, you know well this this girl didn't like you because she wouldn't let her take her grade in and yeah she wasn't ready and because she wasn't ready for a grade in until she's ready for it she won't take it as far as i'm concerned I wanted to have some quality and she wasn't an old woman she was a, a, a very young girl and um so consequently the guy that, that you know sort of ran off with the with the students the club if you like he says oh yeah you know i'll i'll let you take gradients and of course the, you know the the principal who coerced him into doing that so take their gradients no problem mm. give them black belts yeah. and then they're all happy yeah and and so it's a very simple thing to do if you want to coerce people mm. oh yeah you'll get a black belt yeah, <laughs> yeah. right and, it, and if they have no knowledge of their own capability because they won't have because of the way they were taught by this person yeah. then um they're not going to know any different and, and not until they go to another organization and get their ass kicked yeah. when they when they go to another club and start getting ripped apart syllabus wise or technically wise mm. they won't know they just and this is isn't this the problem with so many other martial arts as well not just about what what's happened to me in the past but what has happened to so many other you know groups and parts of the bkfa and parts of you know other you know groups yeah. so it's such a it's a sad affair um but all i can say is the the one thing that i want to see is i want to see a good traditional martial arts uh sus be sustained until yeah. one day at least they can come out the ground and sort of take over the world again because yeah. it, it is such a sad thing to see so much history and science um allocated to kind of the, the back yeah the back stalls kind yeah. of thing yeah yeah absolutely i mean uh, i get but you know that's what i'm about really that's, yeah, that's all think, i'm about but that, it's wonderful yeah i mean you are about that and you know i know it i know it as as sure as i you know live and breathe exactly yeah but, but you look at i mean let's face it you know we, we are uh how should we put it we're uh a dying breed i'd say yeah. oh, i'd say i'd say i'd certainly yeah. say that i mean you know your thought process and sort of by by de facto my thought process because i've you know obviously learned from you a lot we it's very much you know we we believe in the the, the, the meat and potatoes of the style you know the, the, and all the rest of it but and, yeah. and that sort of attitude does not um travel well okay do you know what i mean because no i know <sighs> it's it's like you know we're almost like um, we're almost like a black sheep of a podcast well, we are that's we? your we, yeah we are black sheep i mean it's like we're getting people now quite a few people are now sending us videos or or yeah. you know sending texts and saying or, or emails or whatever and saying oh so what do you say about this technique or that technique and then because i'm useless at writing i tend to just get my daughter to hold the video camera mm. or, or my phone and then i just explain something on the phone then send it and uh and it, and i don't <laughs> i'm not making any money mm. off it it's just i love to teach people yeah. i love to hopefully help people and and of course if i'm if i'm doing something that they wouldn't agree with all they've got to do is just get back on that emails and say yeah. i don't agree with that because then we can create this a good argument for it or yeah. against it and yeah. and if they can convince me that it doesn't work yeah. or that it doesn't exist in that part of the syllabus or whatever which that wouldn't matter then they can they can tell me that's and then and, and because all i'm about is learning and teaching yeah. that's all i'm about I, I, totally totally but i don't think enough people realize what we're trying to do with this podcast you know i think that uh, they think that we're you know go, going off on a tangent or whatever well of course we <laughs> what we do well we do <laughs> let's face it but you know our heart is is firmly you know Laugar. I mean, that's what we're yeah, here but for. You've already said it once, well, several times, James. Uh, you know, people see me as the black sheep because I do have a mouth and I do yeah. say what I need to say, yeah. and people don't like it. And I don't necessarily show respect to people who don't deserve it. I don't like the idea of people just taking a grade because they can afford it. Yeah. I don't like people being guardians just because they can, you know, work a, you know, I don't know paint or, or yeah. take pictures or do 
advertising or whatever that's not the reason people should become guardians guardians mm -hmm. should be people who yes they're devoted to the style and i understand that that's that's great but you know my mm -hmm. attitude and i am being candidly honest yeah, yeah, um, yeah. we're gonna get banned well, <laughs> it wouldn't be yeah. the first time old man <laughs> Well, you know, maybe for me, maybe we should just post a few wushu pics up and get low of likes, <laughs> you know, God. increase our stake, yeah. you know. Yeah. But well, the thing is, look, my attitude is, if if, I mean, I can speak candidly, right, and if people want to, you know, say, oh, we don't want to hear that, you know, that's not fair, you can't, you if you can't accept criticism, then the criticism won't be under your control it'll be under my control so basically i'll just go okay you don't want to hear the criticism i'll just put it out on other you know everywhere else and uh, and that's that's the way it is but but right now i just want to give criticism constructive criticism mm. i don't want to i'm not dissing anyone i'm not saying you know oh you know i don't like this person or that but that's not fair i i don't dislike anyone i just disagree with people yeah. sometimes yeah and uh, and my attitude is you know everybody can is, is can have an argument and then go for a drink together that's that's the way it is it's not it's not like oh you know you shouldn't be doing that you should be doing this the only people i disagree with are people that don't give you the opportunity to answer your accusers yeah, right. they don't give you an opportunity to answer the you know all your, the accusations that have been thrown up you know yeah. out there and, and and that is one of the biggest regrets of course of, of having you know that organization i was talking about earlier and then other things that have happened to me previously mm -hmm. um you know when you don't have the opportunity to find out exactly what was said and and what you're supposed to have uh, or what was implied mm -hmm. And um, and then so that's what I don't like. That's the only thing I don't like. I don't like cowards. I don't like people who hide behind, you know, bullshit. I don't like people who hide behind, you know, kind of uh, their position. Yeah, right. Exactly. You know, or their supposed position, and yeah. then go, yeah. well, you know, uh, you know, you know, Steve, you know, yeah. we, uh, you know, we left because of we, you know, well, tell me why. <laughs> you know, the, one of the, the guy in Scotland. Uh, when he left me, he saw me at the Nationals. He came to the Nationals and asked me to come for a cup of tea. And of course I did. I'm, mm. I'm not a crazy individual. I'm, uh, I'm like a good free cup of tea. So <laughs> I went to him and he says, you know, I'm really sorry what happened. I really don't know why I did this. I don't know what happened. Blah, blah, blah. You know, and then in the next breath, he says, oh, would you come and do a course for me? Oh, there you go. <laughs> Jesus H. Christ, he's just taken pretty much most of scotland yeah. okay and made me redundant in that sense mm. uh coerced all the students and then he goes will you come and do a course for me <laughs> yeah i'm going yeah what are you on i just could not believe and then mm. years later he writes an email saying how great i was and how, how brilliant a student instructor i was and i taught him everything right and i just <laughs> sent him I sent him a letter back, an email back that just told him, look, you betrayed me, you're full of shit, you know, and that's, I don't want to know. Mm. So then I saw him, he, he got a, a, an award or something, and he said, I'd like to thank all my instructors. And you come out with all these instructors he's just met, <laughs> <laughs> that have done things. And guess what? I wasn't even mentioned, even though he was with me for 15 years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. it's so funny it's so hilarious how the human mind thinks yes, how the, how the way people the human think. condition yeah yes yeah. the human condition it's yeah. amazing but we have been a little personal today i think it's been well, terrible i think it's because we're um, so passionate about laugar and we yes, we, we want to yeah. see the best for the style i mean that's the we want to see the best for the association the yeah. best for the style we want to see the best for the students we do and um, you know we want to hopefully get students to to ask as many questions as they possibly can yeah. we want to we want to shake things up and say come on guys let's build yeah. let's let's make this association great again <laughs> <laughs> and who's going to build it let's go <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you see the thing is james trump never got that he didn't make that saying up let's 
let's make America great again. No, Ronald, Ronald Reagan, Reagan said it. I know it was yes. Reagan. Because, yeah. you know, I follow American just, politics. I, you know. He makes it up all the time. Oh, He's just a don't, full start, of Trump. don't start. Oh, don't start me no, on Trump. I'm not having, I'm not, this isn't pol- no. political in that sense. No. <laughs> It seems political, by the way. It oh, seems. it does. Yeah, but very. No, no it, it's it's passion. It's about love. Yeah. It's about love, oh, passion, yeah. and romance. Oh, okay, yeah. or yeah. bromance. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that we might be able to round off this podcast by talking about something like technical and martial art related? Um, <laughs> haven't we done? Have we, have we not yeah, done anything? We've kind of we just like we've we've frittered on about you know things. We've we've had a therapy session, you know. So yeah. Oh yeah. Thank you. I really want to. Uh, yeah. Thank you <laughs> for, for being my therapist <laughs> at this time. And uh, yeah. Talk. To so me. I want to talk. No, go on. be quiet now. You've got to answer, ask my ask my questions. I want to talk about the stick because we said we we're going to do it at the start, and you know, if anyone's yeah. still hanging on at this point, they've probably switched us off by now. But hey, <laughs> yeah, just, just, we did talk about, about the stick initially. No. And yeah, we did. St- well, we talked about what, how it's what portrayed. Want, if you can, can we just start from the bare bones? How many different types of sticks do we have in in Laogan? What are they used for? And uh, give me some of the characteristics and. And, and we'll start well, from there's, there. There's only two, two sticks really, yeah. and that's the rat tail pole. It's called a rat tail pole because it's uh, thin at one end and thicker at the other. It's right. uh, it's it's basically used. One end is used more than, you know, with the, with very rare use of the other. Yeah. Uh, so the smaller end is used to to do the striking. It's about seven feet long. Some styles have it at nine feet long. Mm. It all it totally depends on the style. Yeah. And then the other one is is called a double headed pole or a you know, what, um, would, a rat tail. Would we, that's sorry, not a rat tail, a eyebrow eyebrow. pole. Would yeah. we ever consider, even though the spear has got a sharp, pointy thing at the end, would that ever yeah. be sort of classed in the same sort of uh, you know bracket as no. the sticks? No, 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 no. That's a much more versatile weapon. Um, it's it, it's called the king of the weapons, the spear. Mm. And the spear basically is um, because it's flexible, it's sharp, and it's long. So it has all the attributes of a lot of other weapons yeah. uh, put together so and it's the main weapon of, of if you're a, a, an infantryman yeah. in the Chinese army in, yeah. the, in the early centuries and and if you think about it every single army that has ever existed up until the invention of the gun or, or the the invention of the better gun mm. uh, as um, as as had a, a lance or a spear yeah right every single cavalry uh, and soldiers have was all it? carried spears. What did you say? The king, king of the weapons, didn't you? So king of the weapons, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Um, and come on. I was just going to say, sorry, they always have a, uh, they have a saying about, like, uh, if you can imagine a market trader trying to sell a spear and, and he's trying to sell a... Uh, a shield as well, a mm. cane shield, because that's, that's a weapon, not not just a shield. Yeah. And uh, you can imagine, the Master Massio used to always tell this story, you know, the market trader, oh, you want to buy a spear, right? It's long, it's flexible, it'll whip over the top of the, the shield and be able to cut the man behind it because it's so flexible and so, you know, whippy, and uh, it's got a lovely blade, etc., etc. and you can use both ends, of course. And then, uh, then you say, well, actually, I'd like to buy a, a shield. And of course, the guy says, well, a shield can defi- de- defend everything, can you know stop this doing that, and stop this doing, that, and can strike with it, and and so on. So you can imagine, um, you know, you can co- you can make use or make the better judgment of any weapon if you want. Yeah. So totally depends on what your build is yeah. and what your preference is to what kind of weapon is the king for you. Yes. Yes. Okay. Because no, uh, you know some people prefer the single uh, bladed sword, the Dao, you know, Dan Dao, whatever. Yeah. And um, uh, you know it's got a nice big wide blade and, and curved blades. It's a hacking kind of weapon, although mm. it has got a bit of a point. And then, but of course, you've got this long Jin, yeah. the uh, double bladed sword. But but that tends to be more for people with money. It's yeah. I was going to say because you know uh, Laogar is. Well, it's not an upper class style, is it? <laughs> <laughs> if you, you know, go out, if you you have to go out and kill tigers for a living, and uh, then you and then. <laughs> there you go. 
you and and you're an underdog and you're you're part of a, a, a sect and you're part of an underground revolutionary uh, group i i don't yeah i don't think it's probably going to be for the yeah you know yeah the affluent yeah yeah no, it's yeah. interesting. Interesting that the uh, when you say underground, it's like it's Laogar gangster, gangster, gangster. Yeah. Right. Well, that's what they were, weren't yes. they? They were revolutionaries. Yeah, they, they were originally were. revolutionaries and had nothing to do with crime. But later on, you're scratching again. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm messing about with the table. Uh, later on, they became more um, devote to looking after themselves and making mm. their own income. Yeah. So yes, they did become. Um, you know, little groups. Right. Um, so, uh, untoward. do you reckon, uh, you know, Master Master Yao had any dealings with the old uh, gangsters? No, you? I don't think so. <laughs> Go on. I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> what, what are you trying put to put a hit out on me? He might put a hit out on us for this. No, I'm only kidding. No, no, it's nothing to do with him. Yeah. In, in fact, his grandfather uh, closed his school because he found out that one of his relatives or one of his young... Uh, you know, I don't know whether it was a cousin of Master Yeo or something like that mm. was doing a little bit of dirty trickery so yeah. you know he just didn't want anything to do with that so he was very up up I mean his his granddad was quite uh, affluent quite well known yeah. very famous in Hong Kong yeah. one of the top five masters in Hong Kong yeah. at the time yeah. so when, very very affluent family very well 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 off as well at the time when so when we talk about weapons and that is there a sort of escalation of of learning weapons i mean obviously we, we know from the syllabus we start with the uh, eyebrow pole first and then we move on to the sword and you know etc etc but is there a is there a fixed sort of you know uh, way you, you should progress through the weapons or um well there isn't a fixed one as far as the style is concerned possibly the way that it's devised is the quality of, of learning required or the you know like the heavy weapons are a bit later so they do take mm. a little bit but it's kind of seems to me i mean this is only my opinion by the way i'm not trying to change the syllabus in any shape or form but for me my, if you want my opinion i would have thought the heavy weapons would have been better to teach first because by the time you get to my age doing the heavy weapons is is a lot more cumbersome a lot more harder to do although having said that the techniques and the moves will be slower because of the weight of the mm. weapon so you can look at it in two ways yeah, if you like that's true yeah 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 so yeah. i mean and, and a lot of the time small people won't be asked to do the heavier weapons because you know they just won't be able to wield them yeah so they would tend to do something else instead so it isn't the, the syllabus with weaponry isn't set in stone you see yeah um you, you choose weapons by your weight and you, you shouldn't be forced and, and I don't think you are forced to perform them yeah. um, like that. Um, and of course, uh, nowadays you can get heavy weapons as light as pie anyway, so yeah, yeah. you can still do the techniques, but you're just yeah. not really doing the techniques it, because it wouldn't work with a light weapon. Yeah. Why, why, why is it in Lao we have the weapons we have? Is that due to... Is that due to, to the fact that Master Yao, that's that's pretty much what he trained and, and brought over. I mean, obviously, I'm answering my own question, but what I'm saying well, is, you look, at, look, at, look mm. at, for example, Choi Lee Foot and whatnot. They've got bloody hook swords. They've got this. They've got that. They've got earth, yeah. wind, and fire wheels, whatever they're called. <laughs> they've got so many th weapons. Yeah, but those weapons. I mean, Master Yao would have practiced those too. I've seen pictures with mm. him with the with the hooked swords and yeah. so on, half moon swords. Yeah, uh, you know, axes if you like and um, yeah there, there's there's a lot of weaponry that he wouldn't have bothered with and I think he just kept it to the traditional weapons that uh, you know these the Shaolin would have maintained well they wouldn't have I mean there are lots of weapons knives, in, well butterfly knives were a later I, I would imagine a later addition in the style mm. simply because again because of the uh, revolutionaries you know something you can hide yeah um but mind you didn't they the have street. those um didn't they have like twin swords back in you know back way way yeah a lot of styles do practice twin you know full, like, but, full length swords yeah, yeah. um loving but, but, couple swords yeah loving couple swords so they were a, a bigger blade than a uh butterfly knife but it, it kind of went it, it didn't they share the same scabbard so it looked like you were still yeah one. yeah uh, same as butterfly knives yeah, do yeah yeah um, but butterfly knives might ne necessarily you don't necessarily have to have a scabbard um, you know it's just 
it depends on how you carry yeah. them and and I would imagine that anyone wearing I mean I did see earlier uh, this thing what was it someone Winchum talking about someone holding butterfly knives and they said before they go out you know these gangs uh, with the, yeah. before they go out they take the butterfly knives to their hands yeah well bit of a problem there <laughs> you know <laughs> well man, you can't drop them <laughs> Well, they, that's that's. I think that's what they 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 were sort of suggesting that you know once they start throwing them around, they can't Listen, drop them. But they the watched, thing is, they mm. watched Johnny Depp in Edward Cizans and got ideas. To <laughs> well, the, the, the point I need to make right now is, you know, unless you're carrying a roll of tape with you <laughs> to the battlefield, you're going to have to walk down the street with these swords in your hands. Well, okay, maybe you could in in medieval times, but. Do you know what I mean? They see you coming. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you've got so to be already it's, in it's the fight. More of a secretive weapon because yeah. they're shorter and you can have them under your armpit. You can have them up your sleeve or whatever, depending on the type of clothing you wear and the type of butterfly knives you've got. And of course, they are kind of more of a, you know, drop it out your sleeve and slice the throat as you go past mm -hmm. them. So they're not, they're not kind of meant necessarily to be, you know, um, serviceable military weapons that's mm. not what they were designed to be no. uh, they're just simply hacking you know blades yeah. and if you can't afford them then you just use a, a, a hatchet yeah. you know and that's why you you hear of the, the term the hatchet man because the hatchet man would have the hatchet up his sleeve and then as he got closer to you he would just let it slide down to his hand right. without you knowing Right. And then, as he got close enough to you to hit you, he would then boom, whack, and you're dead. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's why they call you know hitmen like where the hatchet man. Yeah. What's your favourite weapon? Um, I like the 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 quan. You like the, the quan? Best. Do you? Yeah, I like the eyebrow top pole. Okay. The best, I think. Okay. I like Deutschats. That's my favourite form, Deutschat. And and I like the way that people can you know devise other weapons with it mm. using Deutschland because it's very easy to remember uh, if you're doing a demo and you want to learn a new weapon or put two different weapons together then use the the meat you know meat and veg of of, uh, of Deutschland mm. put it all together with the yeah. moves of Deutschland and then you you can remember it quite easily yeah, well, well, you so don't have to you learn can, another set do you you don't have to learn another set now but but the way that we learn Deutschland is just constant repetition repetition yeah. repetition and I don't just mean do the set stop and start again I mean do one direction then back the other way 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 constantly until you're knackered yeah and then you start to devise a, a fluidity in it and uh and then sometimes someone's going to make a mistake and you'll automatically respond to the mistake which is yeah. why uh that's how you should practice yeah yeah so i always thought that the sword was your uh, favorite because you're just so you know prolific with it you know you you really do enjoy swords like you collect them uh, I don't, yeah I, don't, I collect swords i did collect swords i had to get rid of a lot of them to come to canada i didn't have to get rid of them by law but it just was just so difficult uh, and i would have had to like name them all and then they would have had to open all the luggage yeah. and and all that kind of all the packing and everything so i yeah. i just thought no you know i needed money to get over here as well so yeah. I, we, we sold most we sold everything in order well I thought we'd sold everything and then when when the thing arrived even bloody pens were wrapped in paper it was just ridiculous <laughs> oh. and the wife just obviously you know the family who let were i left over there when i came over to recce this place yeah they uh they they were left to sort of you know try to do it themselves and you know didn't particularly get rid of enough stuff yeah. except when she got over my sword didn't come my ah. my my chinese sword the sharp one yeah that never came so and yeah. i've got that i've got two two old so i've got a claymore and a and a, a, a sword from your regiment a yeah. rifle regiment Rifles, yeah. uh, from 1846 yeah. or something yeah 1943 i think i remember pattern uh, yeah that's those are nice swords yeah but i can't do kung fu with them very much very easily i used to do kung fu with um with a russian sword a, a, um yeah the, the, it didn't have a uh a, a, a handguard did it no it didn't have a handguard but it one, had a lovely it? long blade yeah. you got a picture of me in it one thing. yeah it kind of looks a bit like a machete just a bit longer yeah 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 i know the one i've know. forgotten the name of it it's 
Uh, yeah. It's a Russian name, obviously. I've yeah. bloody forgotten the name of it. It was yeah. pre-revolution, and it had a bayonet as well on the on, in the scabbard. Oh, okay. And so I, I bought the bayonet separately, yeah. and a, a Russian bayonet. Yeah. So I had that as well. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Well, it's uh, it's great. I, I, it's it's a wonderful thing doing weaponry, isn't it? It's like it really yeah, I do enjoy the weaponry. Yeah. Um, I, it's very important to keep hold of it. It is a traditional um, yeah. thing. That's the one thing about. Chinese martial arts that I'll keep tradition on is the the weaponry, sustain the weaponry. But of course the techniques are, are traditional as well. They're you know, very scientifically mm. they're already proven. Now one has to turn around and dispute them because, you know, they've been there for thousands of years. Just because you don't like doing traditional martial arts doesn't mean to say it doesn't work. And just mm. because people can't do it to make it work doesn't mean it doesn't work. It totally de it's just the science works yeah. do you know what a good example of that is it's like if you look at jackie chan right yeah. and he'll take anything like a bloody chair or a ladder yeah. or you know a shopping trolley and use it yeah. in a in a martial way in a film yeah. do you know what i mean and you can yeah. see the principles of weaponry in that and it's, it's absolutely brilliant brilliant advocate of traditionalism yeah oh yeah uh, but in but done in a modern way yeah yeah you yeah. know so it, it it brings it to the fore how how it can be used how it can be he's not just standing there just punching at each other no he does a lot of stuff. A lot of his stuff is about defence, isn't it? He's always about evasion. Yeah, and oh that's, yeah. That's what I like about him. Some, you know, these big guys come out and start attacking him, and he's just evasion, evasion, evasion. Oh yeah. And then, a, then a punch, punch the lights out, sweep them. Yeah. Everything. It's really good. Yeah. And usually, it's a weapon that knocks them out, <laughs> not necessarily <laughs> him punching them out. Yeah. He punches them a few times, and then ends up like sticking a, a you know, some kind of like a tire over their shoulders or, or opening something. the fridge in their face yeah there you go. that's the kind of thing yeah. <laughs> so i do like that i love jackie chan i yeah. think he's a he's he's a great um advocate for that oh, I, yeah. I like his uh, more modern movies yeah. yeah so you know rush hour and stuff like that i like those kind of things oh, yeah, yeah. very much well i tell you what we're gonna we'll call it a call it a day on this and but we yeah. really 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 want to talk about some more uh, weapons in the next one coming oh uh, for sure yeah we'll we'll, we'll individual the weapons yeah again. okay all right so individualize the weapons yeah. as we talk yeah. i tried so to do that tonight that. but we kind of drifted off didn't we i wanted to yeah um, you can call this one you know me it oh. was it's all about me an introduction to me oh, okay. oh, <laughs> introducing steve newby as his former self <laughs> the artist formerly known as yeah and if and if people look on youtube and they look on youtube and they're not interested in martial arts they can look if they if i i put things on uh steve newby englishman or englishman steve newby that's what it is englishman steve newby and it's just got me driving a a semi like a, a eight thousand what is it eighty eight thousand pound truck or something like that yeah. yeah that's not the cost that's the weight <laughs> yeah Hey, something like that anyway yeah big trucks yeah. uh over over the coca-hala the 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 um what's, what's that known as it's bloody yeah highway to hell there you go ACDC, highway, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah highway highway through hell it's called yeah. the the coca-hala and they gave me the job in the middle of bloody winter when it was dark and it wasn't until the, the, the spring the, the light changed and i started seeing all the bloody cliffs and thinking crap mm. <laughs> you know yeah Absolutely. But it's the first time for anyone who's interested in trucks, and I know they're not, <laughs> that I ever did 94 miles an hour <laughs> in a truck because there's there's no limitations here. In yeah. in Britain, they're limited to 55. And when I got in a truck here and I went down a hill, 18 miles downhill, uh, you know, 94 miles an hour, the strongest muscle in my body is my sphincter. <laughs> 50p, 20p, 50p, 20p. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are we listening yeah. to meatloaf at the time <laughs> no no oh. no that was the speed camera oh, that, that was wasn't it oh yeah yeah oh my yeah. god both my hands out the, out the sunroof driving through <laughs> screaming <laughs> my head after it yeah luckily i was going the opposite direction against the camera so they must have that in the police station you know a big framed picture of me driving through in a black bmw <laughs> with my hands raised up in the air oh brilliant yeah i've just i've just given myself away now yeah, i've just you, bloody you, criminalized myself you are right guys thanks again for joining us on another episode of the kung fu podcast uh hopefully normal service will be resumed next week <laughs> and, uh,
we do we, we heartily apologize anyway take it easy it's goodbye from me james still and oh guys don't forget don't forget do us a favor just go on to our facebook give us a like like us on podbean like us on youtube follow us all the rest of that stuff we really would appreciate it and uh, obviously if you've got questions guys send them in we're all about questions we're all about debate you know we would really mm-hmm. relish that anyway right. and apologize to anybody who would have been offended by the things i've said mm. okay. except for the people who did them <laughs> <laughs> oh. hey never apologize you never apologize do you have to apologize oh, yeah. Doesn't i have like... to apologize everywhere i go <laughs> yeah. oh, Right, guys, thanks again for joining us. Take care of yourselves. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye. So I kick your little Beijing ass right now, man. Scared of you. I know you know that little tricky shit. Come on. Hi guys, thanks so much for joining us on the Kung Fu Podcast. If you like that and you want to find out more about us, you can head over to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or YouTube and find us under SJN Martial Arts. And also guys, this podcast is available on Podbean and iTunes. So, until next time, take care of yourselves and we'll see you again on the Kung Fu Podcast. Why doesn't somebody pull off 45 and bang, settle it? No, no guns.